Hello and welcome to another FittingSites.com screencast tutorial. I'm Jerry Bates and today we are going to be covering a few WordPress fundamentals. And today what we're going to talk about is how to enter and style text in WordPress, which is just a little different than most people are used to. It's not quite the same as using Word or just a regular text editor um, because we are publishing to the internet. And so let's go ahead and start diving into it. We begin here in the WordPress dashboard for our home page, which as you can see is completely blank. And the first thing that I want to say is that the mistake that a lot of people make here is that they'll start writing directly in the text editor, uh, almost as if it were a Word document, for example. And for WordPress, this is actually kind of a bad idea. Uh, I'll show you why exactly in a little bit. But for now, let's just say that um, when you tend to write and delete things and change things and go back and revise what you've written. It tends to get WordPress just a little mixed up and so when you use this method for publishing it actually results in much less hair pulling and a better experience overall. So the first thing that I recommend is that you always write your posts or your pages in an external text editor and then paste it into WordPress and style it there. As much as possible, you want to avoid rewriting your text and really think of WordPress as just the place that you make it look pretty before you publish it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we happen to have some text ready to go for our home page. And what we're going to do is just copy it and then paste it into the editor. And it's very important to note that when you're pasting text into this window here, that sometimes your text can have formatting which might be invisible to you but that WordPress will see and pick up on and it can lead to some pretty strange errors. So it's always recommended that you use these two clipboard options here. This one is paste as plain text which removes all formatting and if you happen to be writing in a Word document you can also use paste from Word. Uh, I happen to prefer using plain text because I feel that it's best to start with a totally clean slate and remove all styling. So you just copy and paste your text into here. You might want to notice to keep your line breaks checked. It helps keep everything organized and keeps your paragraphs the way they were. Just so click insert. And here we go. We have our text inside the editor. And you can see already that there's just a little bit of strangeness here. There's probably a little too much space between the paragraphs. And this just displays when you first paste text in but if you were to update or save as a draft if you haven't published yet and refresh your page you can see that that space has tightened up quite a bit so don't worry too much about that we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at our page and see that yes we have our text here and oftentimes people will leave it just like this which is kind of a little boring it could use a little spicing up and more importantly, it, if you organize your text correctly, it makes it a little easier to read as well, easier for your visitors to scan your site and find the information they need. So the first thing I've done to help break things up is I've created different headings for each of the sections. It's a really great way to scan, to make your text scannable and organize your content. And I also happen to think it just looks nice. This is a technique that book publishers have been using for years, and it makes perfect sense for WordPress as well. And now often what people do is just highlight the text that they want to make the heading, and then click on this button here to bold the text, which it works, but it's not the best way to do it. So we're actually going to do it a different way. We're going to create headings. WordPress makes this very easy by having this little tab available here, which displays several different formatting options. We're going to focus on headings for now. And you can see that there's several headings, six in this particular theme, and they're all different sizes. This isn't exactly how it looks, but sort of a representation of what you get when you click on each of these. And heading one, obviously, very large and the most important in terms of hierarchy. Heading 2 would be something that might be related to Heading 1, but, you know, a subhead, not quite as important. Heading 3. And I generally stick with these three headings. There's not much point in going further than that. Um, but most good themes have these two 
or three headings set up correctly so that they'll display very nicely on your page. And for this one at the top of the page, we're going to give it a value of heading 1, which as you can see, makes the text quite a bit bigger than just bolding it alone. For comparison, we're going to go ahead and bold this. And you can see just by looking at the two of these that our heading of 1 here has quite a bit more weight, quite a bit more importance. It really sort of kicks off the page. And if we had just done it like this so that it was bold, it would it would stand out, but not quite the same way. And actually, this one, which we're bolding here, we are going to give it a heading of 2. And we're going to give it a heading value of 2 because this particular topic is related to the page, which is talking about Sugar Baby's Cup Cupcake Boutique. So it makes perfect sense to hierarchically say that it's related and a subheading of heading 1. We're also going to select this heading, which introduces a list element describing the green building options that went into this bakery. And we're going to give it a heading of 2 as well. And if we were to have another heading that falls under this category of green build-out, then probably what we would do is we would give that a value of heading 3. But in this case, we just have a simple hierarchy with one main topic and two subtopics that are related to it. And that's a pretty good start. So we're going to update this and then view our page. And you can see that very similar to the text editor, although never trust the text editor to tell you exactly what the page is going to look like, always save it and view the page as it looks in WordPress when people visit your site. And already we can see that the text has become quite a bit more scannable. It has major headings that stick out. It's really easy for a reader to sort of scan the page and find the piece of information that's important to them. It's a very good practice in publishing, but it's also a very good practice when it comes to search engine optimization as well. Let's take a look at the reason why that might be the case. And along the way, we're going to explain why you shouldn't write inside of the WordPress text editor. So you notice you have two tabs here. One is for the visual editor, which is what we're using in this example. But if we click here on this tab, we'll see that WordPress is actually writing HTML code on the fly every time that we are writing in the visual editor. And one of the reasons that WordPress gets just a little confused when you change things is that you might make a very simple change in the visual editor that might have a very complicated change to the code that's going on behind the scenes. So for this reason, we paste our text in first and then style it. And what we can see here is that we actually have tagged these headings in such a way that search engines can understand what they mean. A search engine, when it crawls your site, will understand that this has a heading value of 1, which means that it's super important, the most important thing on the page. And it also tells the search engine that's crawling your site that this text is related to heading number 1. And that's something that isn't communicated when it's just bolded. When it's just bold, all we see is that we have a line of text that's bold and then some other lines of text that aren't. And search engines don't quite understand the relationship between the two, but if you give it a value of heading 1 or heading 2, you're telling search engines when they crawl your site that this content is important and that the content that comes after it is related to it. It's very good for relevancy, very good for search engine optimization, and a little underutilized. And let's go ahead and view the page again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference between this little bit of styled text here, and I have another example set up that's done the other way, where we're just bolding the headings instead of giving them values like heading 1 and heading 2. And you can see just by clicking back and forth that we have a very nice scannable block of text here as opposed to this one, which does stand out, absolutely, but it doesn't quite carry the same weight. And it doesn't carry that weight with search engines as well as with readers. So this is a very good practice for styling your text. Makes it great for people who come to your site and also gives you a little benefit with search engines too. And that's a good place for us to stop for now. Uh, 
When we come back, we will be covering a few more formatting options for text that are also very important and underutilized. So until then, this is Jerry Bates for FittingSites.com. Enjoy your day.